My biggest question is, what does what does Brixton itself feel about the dispute? I mean, surely the, the, the umbrella effect is, well, hold on, <laughs> we are Brixton. Do you know what I mean? Well, you've got to remember, Brixton and anywhere Hackney, um, you know, White City, Labbrook Grove, they're, they're, they're not a name. Yeah, they're, they're a... They're a, a feeling. Yeah, that's you right. I'm saying? You can't and, copyright that. You know, and the feeling is what we've got. Ain't a feeling other people ever have. Right. I'm, I've never once disrespected anyone that uses that name for any sort of um, product they're trying to use. Yeah. Like, and I've always understood that this, this is a lot of um, bigger businesses and corporate stuff mm. that works within it. So I'm very respectful of understanding that this ain't personal. Mm. The problem is, is it is personal to people that live here because it's, mm. it's we've had to grow up in this and grow up in the culture here and grow up in a different trials and tribulations through riots you know through um, bombings through everything to be yeah. who we are you know yeah. what I mean so people they they would never understand what it really means to be from uh, inner city council state Killer Keller official dot com Street Culture TV Beatbox created Killer Keller and we need to talk about world music Street Culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Are you <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, could be, God forbid you want to be anywhere else, big shout out to Sharon Carers, people been clocking from the jump. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. We're in a very special location. The hub of Brixton, no less. Brixton Village HQ right here, where an abundance and assortment of beautiful people from all walks of life gather to get their daily the daily bits and bobs, and we're in the morning, it's Tuesday, of course, and uh, inside the house, or inside their house, this is, a, this is a place called Brixton Streetwear. Now, for a lot of you that have been on the ground operating street culture, you'll know the uh, presence of these guys and the awareness that they've built, not just in the area, but more across nationally, uh, with their range of clothing and generally their sense of placement within the community. <laughs> and. Uh, we're up against it at the moment, so we're going to come and uh, join forces right here, Killer Keller Podcast. Dan, how are you, my brother? I'm okay, bro. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> and welcome to, to our humble abode. <laughs> oh, and, and and grateful am I. I'm here, man. I mean, uh, not not often I get the opportunity to take some stock and uh, enjoy a, a bit of the the morning activities around these parts. Yeah, man, it's definitely a place to be savoured, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's had its ups and downs, and of course, uh, resistance from the community with regards to some of the gentrification that's going on. What's it like on the ground over here for you? Um, yeah, it's, it's always been kind of all right. Like, um, we, you got to understand, places change um, and places evolve. Bricks and become expensive, and. Um, yeah, like you still got a lot of the general community come and shop here. So like everyone hasn't disappeared, but there is a lot of changes that make it a bit more for the wealthy, you know? Yeah, you guys have been here for a while. I mean, you grew up here, Dan, like, um, and big up Pete as well. Yeah, big up my little brother, yeah. Yeah, man. that's right. You'll kill us if we didn't. Um, yeah, man. What's, the, what's the general vibe for you as a, as a, a Brixton native? Um, well, do you know what? It's for, for my children, it's been great. Yeah, I'm... I'm for me, when the changes started happening with Brixton, it was a bit sort of like off key for me because a lot of places that I generally uh, went to started changing. They started uh, sort of moving businesses around because the rents were too expensive. But it also at the same time, if people looked into it, they were trying to regenerate the place, like make the arches and the shops better than they were because they were sort of run down a bit. Mm. But um, I, I can understand that because I, I have had businesses here, so I know what it's about. Um, but yeah, for my children and my family, it's... it's uh, a better place to be. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. I remember coming here as a youth myself and going to HQ just down the road, the Graf Spot, yeah, and man. you know, just generally. Uh, I mean, not from the area, so I take it a certain with a certain tone. But when you're on the ground here, there really is a sense of community, isn't there? Um, yeah, man. Like literally, I've grown up here all my life. Um, so I've been in and around South London as well. So Clapham, Stockholm, Brixton, um, Streatham. So. All these places to me mean quite a lot, but Brixton's my home. So yeah. it, the, the the actual culture of Brixton, it was pretty rough when I was younger. Mm. So in the 80s and 90s, it was a totally different place than it ever will be now. Yeah, know? I bet it was hard to get out of some uh, uh, some shenanigans, wasn't it? I mean, you know, I mean, a little bird tells me that you were certainly uh, moving and shaking for your time. Yeah, I, I, 
I've done a bit, you know. About, <laughs> you know what? I was, I was quite blessed because I had people before me, um, and my family was well respected within the community. You know mm. what I mean? So like, um, I had it a bit easier than others would have had it. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. So where are we at right now in 2024 with Brixton Streetwear? Because obviously there is a, a call to arms right here. There's some things going on that we need to broadcast publicly to the street culture nation. What's, what's, what's going on here? Yeah, well, I can't say too much because legal reasons. Uh -huh. but I'll give you the download of what's happened. Um, we started up in 2019. Basically, we um, trademarked the name. Uh, we went into... We, this was never meant to be a fashion brand. All of a sudden, my friends that I used to DJ for uh, or, or with as well, mm. Uh, basically got older me and said, oh, can I get that T-shirt? We started getting T-shirts for friends and family. And I got big up my brethren, Daryl, but he's the one that taught me how to DJ. Oh, tight, Daryl. Uh, oh, big tight. boy, big boy. But uh, listen, Ball of D, he was wicked, man. Um, so he helped me DJ. He was the one that bought, he bought 10 or 20 T-shirts off me and just distributed them without our friends. Um, and then it just went from there, opened the Instagram, 100 followers instantly. Um, and then it gradually just grew and grew and grew to the point we're at now. It's crazy. It's crazy to think, because I remember when you guys first began your, uh, your campaigns of, of fashion. And even now, I mean, you know, the levelling up that you guys have committed yourselves to, it's, uh, it's unprecedented, really. Yeah, so, do you know what? It's a, it's a lot of work. Um, the thing that drives us is a different thing that might drive others, you know? Mm. You know, some people are dri driven by um, trying to keep up with fashion. Some people are trying to uh, keep up with um, funds. They, mm. They're after a certain amount of, uh, like, coin. Mm. We're not after that. Mm. We're, we're trying to uh, sort of defend our culture and look after our culture in London. Mm. You know, that we know. I don't know anywhere else. I presume we're all the same everywhere we go. Yeah. But um, the, the culture of Brixton, where I grew up in, I'm part of that. And it was for me, it was about giving back to my community. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, we, it is a business. Um, we are a charitable organisation. Um, but it's like, for me, I just want to make sure that the young, young kids underneath us understand what it is to be from the street and to grow up and make something of yourself, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I'm guessing, you know, it's the David and Goliath effect. If you can, if you can be seen to fighting your corner um, in scenarios that you're in at the moment, then surely that is inspiring to the next generation as well. Um, I would hope, I'd hope to think so. The, like, the thing is, is like, when you do things like Brixton Streetwear, you know you're gonna have bumps and lumps in the road. It's like any business that's successful or anything that you're trying to portray that's successful. People do want to push buttons and move things around. I've had doors shut in my face. People can't understand that I've been offered things that other people would, would never say no to and I've mm. said no to. Mm. Uh, it's, it's morally to me, I can't accept things, you know? Mm. So I've got, I've got to protect the people that, that protect me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's like the people in this community, whether they're black, white, they're from the Colombian community, they're from the Indian community, you know, we all stand as one. Mm. You know, you don't come through this market and everyone ignores each other. You know, I walk through this market in the morning, I feel like, like, I feel like a god, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, yo, so, like, I've <laughs> got people saying hello, you know? Yeah, 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 man, I've been sitting here setting up and, you know, you've you pretty much shook hands, said hello and, you know, had a conversation with everybody and... You know, again, it's early morning here, people, you know what I mean? We've had our week of it, but trust me, like, there's a lot of people here that are working 10 to the dozen, and it just certainly feels like you're, you're, you're a part of that. You're a part of the shop over there as much as the shop here. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I remember when we first opened the doors, uh, you got a lot of people that didn't know me and my brother because I was, I was off the, the street for quite a long time. I opened business around the back of Brixton. I've done other things in my life. I grew my family up. Uh, Brixton Street where drew me back into the sort of um, the limelight, should you say, like mm. the, of people's eyes. So mm. like, I was in people's view again. And I had a lot of people come in and going, oh, what are you, who are you? And then all, they would go away and ask someone else and go, right, I've seen them two white boys in the middle of Brixton. Mm -hmm. And then they, they find out who I am. Yeah, and they go, ah, oh, come back, listen, I'm so sorry, man. Because they, they knew that I knew their uncles or their, their cousins or their dads. I fucking so love like, it. It's, it's mad, you I know what I mean? I love it. So like this, this for me, I never, I never see colour till I was like 18. I went to go and get my first proper job. And the first thing that I, they said to me is, why do you speak like a black man? Mm. And I never knew, I, I didn't, I was just me. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. And it was like, this was really, it was weird. I was on a building site. And I thought to that from that day, I thought I'm never going to change myself because people mm. want to change me for what they think they should be. Yeah. You know, we were, I was a young Irish boy in a black community and, you know, everyone embraced me. No one ever called me anything. You know, I never called them anything. We were just about hip hop, uh, jungle. Yeah. I mean, that was our life, you know? I think that's, you know, from a cultural point of view, 
uh, a community point of view, that's, that's a stark difference between America and the UK, is that we, you know, it's, a class, it's as much a class system here, um, moreover than maybe the US. And hip hop, black music, drum and bass, it's reinterpreted differently for all of those reasons. It's, that's why music like grime has come, come, come about because it's in reference, influenced by its surroundings. And I think Brixton Streetwear kind of honours that. Uh, I would like to think that I've done the best job, uh, me and my brother, sorry, has done the best job of portraying what um, Brixton Streetwear is, mm. you know, and, and who we are as people. Because my brother grew up in a do- totally different world to me. Yeah. You know, he, he never had what I had on the streets. He, he never had that sort of feeling or that vibe, you know. Yeah. He, he literally was, um, he was, he went, he was a fighter. He went all across the world fighting. He travelled, you know. He, he had his own troubles in his life, you know. I know a lot about him that people never know. Mm. Yeah, and he knows a lot about me that everyone knows, you know what I mean? Well, this so, is what the podcast is for, you see. Yeah. This is where we get deep down and dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do you, okay, so the dispute is with the name Brixton. My biggest question is... What does what does Brixton itself feel about the dispute? I mean, surely the, the, the umbrella effect is. Well, hold on, we are Brixton. Do you know what I mean? Well, you got to remember Brixton and anywhere Hackney, um, you know, White City, Labrook Grove. They're, they're they're not a name. Yeah, they're they're a they're a, a feeling. Yeah, that's you right. I'm saying you can't and, copyright that. You know, and the feeling is what we've got. Ain't the feeling other people ever have. Right. I'm I've never once disrespected anyone that uses that name for any sort of. Um, product they're trying to use yeah. like, and I've always understood that this, this is a lot of um, bigger businesses and corporate stuff mm. that works within it so I'm very respectful of understanding that this ain't personal mm. the problem is is it is personal to people that live here because it's, mm. it's we've had to grow up in this and grow up in the culture here and grow up in a different trials and tribulations through riots you know through um, bombings through everything to be yeah. who we are you know yeah. what I mean so people they they would never understand what it really means to be from uh, inner city council state. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm not going to say people in the States will never understand because we, we've had messages from the Bronx. We've had messages from places like uh, Crown Heights. Bruv, listen, wow. these, these, these places are deep, bruv. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they understand what we're trying to achieve and they understand. They've embraced us and said to us, look, look, lads, we love what you do. Keep on doing it. Mm. Are you going to get that from a little, no, 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 little, no. Play, a little hub in South London? You know well, what I mean? again, Brixton holds such a, you know, a, a, a close... Um, heart to a lot of people that have, you know, either performed at the Academy or the Mass or Hootenanny, you know, uh, big up Chip Shop as well, you know. The, oh, you've got to big up Mikey and yeah, Sid. Yeah, big up love, Mikey love. Sid, hold tight. You know, institution itself. Um, I think particularly where hip-hop's concerned and, you know, it's entry into the scene. You know, it resonates with a lot of people in the US and, and globally, doesn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. Like, my, my first real taste of it, like, of hip-hop in Brixton, um, like I, I was into hip hop from quite a young age, um, and the first time I ever really experienced it is when I bumped into Ice T at Brixton Academy and Hijack. So big up Comanche Sly as well. Yeah, yeah, whole time you know Hijack. I mean? like, yeah, you yeah. know, he's, he's a big dog out here, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I love him to bits, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, so hip hop seventy three. You got got to go on his side, man. I just got to big him up. Come on, come on, and geez, Ice T again has been another advocate as have. NWA, as a public enemy, uh, you know, oh, oh, Can I just big up Chuck T, public enemy as well? They've reposted some of the stuff that we do, and this is one love to them, brother. Yeah, it's no games. I mean, this is this is this is all out, you know, strategizing, you know, galvanizing an army of people that can speak, you know, candidly from the ground about what what Brixton is as a place and what this this place embodies, what Brixton Streetwear embodies. Yeah, a lot, but when people come here, they understand it, you know? Mm. It's like going to, it's going to like uh, Disneyland, you know, everyone everyone wants yeah. to go there, but yeah. when you have to go there, you know, you go, oh my God, it's amazing, or, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, Vegas, yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah, Brixton exactly. is that sort of feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's that, <laughs> genuinely, genuinely. How are you guys, what's the feeling within the camp? What's the feeling between you and your brother at the moment? How, how's, the, how's, the, how's the temperature within the, the, your, your heads? Um, yeah, we're both all right. We're both level-headed guys. You know, we understand, like, like sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. But, you know, as I say to you, like, the thing is about uh, what's going on is that we're getting a resolve. You know what I mean? Mm. We're getting some sort of communication that we can understand and we can go forward. You know what I mean? So that there in itself is, is progress, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, you've had an amazing campaign so far. What, what, what else have you been on? I mean, nothing a shadow of Killer Killer podcast, get damn it. But, well, you know, where, where else have you been uh, th- th- casting your net? Um, like we've, had, we've had interviews with the BBC. We've had um, Inner City Cab, um, so uh, Taxi Talks had them. Um, I might have got their name wrong, but big him up. Yeah, um, so. All City. All, all City, that's it, All City, that's it. I always get it all... Listen, man, I'm terrible at reading. I'm terrible at remembering <laughs> stuff like that, even though I'm a cab driver. <laughs> hey, hey, all you need is the knowledge, bro. Yeah, man, all listen, you... that, but a big him up is wicked, man. He's yeah. he come and done an interview. A couple I had to turn down because, obviously, we're, we're moving forward and I can't do certain things because of legal reasons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like and yours, of course, is the Come one. On, you know, BBC. Come on. I mean, so. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic, man. And to hear that things are moving forward and dialogue is happening, you couldn't ask for more um, in situations like this. It's so key that communication is transparent and moving, right? Well, that that's exactly it. You, if, if you talk instead of jumping, you know, you you'll get some sort of results. You know, everyone will understand when you jump before you talk. Yeah. Results like this sort of happen. You know what I mean? Where like it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, mm. like, and like I never, I never expected to get this sort. It was never meant to be a media campaign, or it was never meant to be like that. Because to us, it ain't a media campaign. What happened with us was, is I wanted to tell my people that sp- support me and sponsor me and help me, like through trying to make this work. Mm. Yeah, people that are constantly buying off me regularly, even if they don't need something, they mm. do it. Mm. You know, and I've got to tell them what's going on because I can't just go to them and shut the shop because of this. No, you know? but I, I needed advice and help. And they come out in their droves, man. It's like an army, you know, which is unbelievable. And I'll just say, i just got to say, big up everyone that has, has donated to our GoFundMe. For real, um, for real. And one love to everyone that supported us. And I mean, I mean that from the bottom of mine and my brother's hearts, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So. Yeah, no, it's huge. Um, well, on the subject of people just purchasing for the sake of purchasing, yeah, and uh, the dog is definitely looking at the rabbit right here. What do we have in the Brixton shop? Let's get down to the nuts and bolts. I mean, you guys have got... a. a that's sort of different like items and things that you know not only you know add value to the surface that of things that aren't being sold, but also you've got some banging items, haven't you? Yeah, we got um, we got our heavyweight tees to start off. That's my favourite product mm-hmm. that we do. Basically, they're they're like oversized heavyweight. They wash well. They wear well. They're like they're like proper old school t-shirts. You know, mm-hmm. like one that you lasted you forever. Uh, we have got our baseball cap, snapbacks, um, the regular sort of um, sort of headwear, buckets. Ooh. Just bits and pieces, lightweight t-shirts for people that don't want to, don't want to walk around with heavy t-shirts. No, I'm with you. I love the heavy t-shirts. Yeah. The thickness on that, banging, yeah, bro. When you wear them, you feel good. Um, yeah. We've had some jackets made um, in the past, which we still got some. Yeah. Um, so when it's coming, boy. Yeah, when it's coming. We call, it, we call them the M25 jacket, <laughs> but they got all like ray flies inside. But if you go on our website, you will see exactly what we do. Really. Um, hoodies, regular stuff like that, and yeah. then the other stuff we do is we we sort of display art for um, artists that want to put their stuff up, providing there's only one stipulation, is that they basically promote it. I don't promote nothing for anybody except for my own brand. Yeah. I don't put anyone else's clothes in here. Nah. Um, I've, I've got other uh, items in here, like there's a guy that, or oh, two lads from um, North London that do um, art on what shoes, skateboards, anything like that. Nice. Um, skates. So collaborations, but, but yeah, all in line all with it, the... All it is yeah. is basically to give everyone a chance. You know, we... Yeah. we we want to open our hearts and our doors to people that would never be exhibited, you know? We've yeah. got a young girl that makes rugs for us. She made a rug for me in the beginning. I put it up and I, I hope she's had lots of orders of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's part of the course, isn't it? You know, giving people opportunity to start their careers or at least uh, be uh, part of the uh, culture of Brixton Streetwear. That's... Uh, you know, it's it's what it's it's the value that you put it on, and you know people are coming in and collaborating, which is everything, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt. I think when you as you, as you see, when people come together, things happen. Mm. You know, I think Brixton Streetwear should be like one of the pinnacles of things. Say, look, this is this is what happens when people actually speak up yeah. and stand up for something. You know, it's, it's like it's that stand for something or fall for, for everything, anything. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So, Bob Marley right there, hundred yeah, percent. You, you know? Yeah, yeah. So well, look, on that note, then, because you know, we this is a public political broadcast for street. Uh, Brixton Streetwear so what do you want to say to the people what do you want um, to say to the people at this point in time as part of your campaign ever growing tell uh, us, well tell us all I'd like to say is thank you to everyone that supported us so far you know anyone that's passing is always welcome even if they just want to come sit down and talk browse if you're a DJ MC look on our um, our Insta there's different um, events we do um, we've got comedy nights we do all there's so mm. much different stuff we do yeah and um it's all about the street culture. Yeah, believe that. 
Dan. Absolute legend, man. And best of Hello. luck with it all. Oh, you know what we're doing here. We're out here on the ground. Tell, talk to me about it, all right? Uh, comment below. And, of course, share that donations page. Uh, it's on the GoFundMe on uh, the Brixton Streetwear Instagram. But enough of this yapping. We're out. It was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Remember, crime don't pay, neither do I. Killer Killer podcast. Streetwear. Let's go. Brixton. Peace. Peace out. Peace out.